This will be a really short one, guys. Um, I thought this was cool enough that I went in and I got my camera just to do it. So this is a kind of looks like a grasshopper. It's actually a leaf hopper, is what, what it, species it is. I, exactly, I don't know, but it's a leaf hopper. And you can see it looks almost like it molted. It didn't molt. Um, here's what happened. Um, I've learned this year, and I had a video earlier in the year, Swiss chard, and this I have a lot of Swiss chard in here. There's a, a particular species of jumping spider, and they look like little tiny tarantulas. They get about, they're big for a jumper. Jumpers are small. They get about that big, and they love to live like down in my shard. I've even started to allow some of my shard, like that clump over there, to go well past its prime to create hiding spots for them. And they'll, they're a generalized predator, and they, I've seen them kill these guys before. And what that actually is, um, a spider killed that leaf hopper and basically sucked it till there was nothing left of it. And then you see little ants there. The ants came and took whatever's left and they basically, there's an exoskeleton now. And this is a, just another reason that I am so big on, you know, natural gardening and permaculture. And I'm not worried that like this basil that's growing in here with this uh, ground nut that's growing in here with this uh, Swiss chard has you know some some leaf damage that look uh the bugs ate some of my basil i don't care i have basil literally coming out of my ears in fact this basil is probably do a lot better if we got the you know the guild off of it right it's being gilded by this vine i don't i don't care about that either what i care about is that my predators are in balance with my prey and that kind of thing's happening right guys because there's my other predators there i'm uh decided to water this tree a bit with some pond water and they're uh hanging out right guys you guys have grasshoppers to eat too don't you huh I think it's two ducks and yeah two ducks and a drake hanging out there that's about to get turned off guys anyway uh i'll show you what i'm doing with this i actually have a pipe that i can do this directly with but it silts in and i dig it up in the winter and i just let it cover over in the summer and this was easy so i just took a piece of scrap pipe hooked it onto one of my flow through wicking beds here so right, this this pipe usually goes down this uptake, this up up stack, and then there's a, a false bottom in this wicking bed. And down there in the bottom, water runs through. There's about eight inches of water, and then there's about 20 inches, uh, no, probably about 18 inches of soil on top of it, and it overflows on that end. So all I did was just spin that around, throw that piece of scrap pipe on it, we're watering that uh, Antonovka apple there. And so this is like the easy way to do a water change. I'm gonna shut it off, but. You can see I've drained almost half the water out of it, and there's a float valve there. So while that was going on, I just, back here, I have that hooked up to that float valve, boom. And then I'll go over here and disconnect this, and you can hear that now. That's the easiest water change you can get, and we're in the middle of our drought of the summer, and you can see that apple's got a few yellow leaves on it where it's not quite happy. Give it a good drink of high nutrient water, and on our way. But I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Chickens coming to see what the ducks are up to. We'll catch you later.